Hey guys, welcome back to another awesome episode of Marketer's Mindset Podcast. Podcast, podcast. We need a cool intro or something like that. I think we actually do. Never mind, forget that. Today I have Cody Getchell. Did I say it right? It's correct. Cody Getchell from Custom Creatives in, you're in Los Angeles, California? I'm in Vancouver. We have an office down in Los Angeles and an office up in Vancouver. So we do, we do but I'm currently up oh. in Canada land, yeah. Canada land. <laughs> That's awesome. It's so cool because I don't, I don't really, um, when I was in the marketing space, uh-huh. I rarely dealt with people in the same state because I'm in California too. So it's unique when I kind of connect with, you know, or we, I know you're in Canada, but when I connect with people just sort of semi-close or if the business is close, it's kind of unique. But yeah. Cody, why don't you just tell me what you do, how you guys make revenue. You told me you kind of have two different businesses, so you can touch on both of them if you want. Yeah, so I'm, I'm a senior partner in the custom creatives agency, like you talked about, that has the offices down in LA, up here in, in Vancouver, and obviously employees and stuff all over the world. And that, that company has been around since 2004. Um, doing originally designing those, you know, those annoying old things that used to pop up and say, buy my shit, you know, that those, those pop up ads, the banner ads, that's, that was what the company originally did. Since then, it's been more of SEO diving into Facebook and Google advertisements and that kind of stuff. And so we've done quite well on that side of things. And now we've transferred that over into the, the get shit done GSD mode here. All right. That's get cool. shit done program where we actually help agencies um, and coaches kind of build similar businesses to what we've done over the years. So we have both a seven figure agency and a seven figure coaching program. um, And we teach those types of people how to master their traffic sales and systems. And it's a year long mentorship program where we uh, help them create and scale those types of companies. And that's based off the success you did in your agency. Oh yeah. We, we didn't launch the coaching program until a couple of years ago. So that was already like 15 years experience for, for Rahul and about 10 years experience for myself um, doing the agency life before we did that. And as a caveat there too, we only served agencies with that experience right up until recently. So we had two years experience building the seven figure coaching program before we were like, okay, now we are capable of also coaching those types of people and mentoring those types of people build something similar. So we're very much experience based. I mean, between the two of us, we have 25 to 26 plus years experience um, in the agency game. And so that's what we lean on heavily to help people get shit done. Dang. Well, I love, you got to send me a t-shirt. I need one of those. Those are cool. (laughs) Give us the address, dude. We'll send one over. Dude, I love that thing. So, that's cool branding so wait, wait so everything man we got the mugs we oh the- no don't even start dude i love mugs <laughs> <laughs> i i'm obsessed with that stuff if you give me a mug i will like hold it for you um uh-huh. we'll talk after so you so you started the agency 15 years ago and you how, like how quickly did you build it to well okay when you first started to where it is now is probably just eons different and i can understand that but like how long did it take when you first started to kind of get you your first chunk of like, you know, your first chunk of success where you made kind of maybe more money you've made before, or you started seeing like, this is, this is working. Let's keep going. Like yeah, so my, my, my personal story on this was it took about two or three years of my, of my personal experience doing an agency to really get shit going. Um, I quit. I, I got, got through university, the degree back there. And then I got out of that. I actually owned a used car dealership to, put myself through university. What a waste of life that all was. And I used some of those skills along with some of the bullshit theories that teach you in there to launch the a digital marketing agency. But the funny thing was back then, like, I mean, for me, the, the real start for me was around 2010 ish. And I came into custom creatives a little bit after that. So I had a different type of agency at that very starting phase. And it was nowadays most people are competing against other marketers right there's so many agencies and you're just you just got to prove that you can actually do the shit you say you're going to do and you got to get better and sharpen those skills back then it was actually convincing people they had to be on facebook this new weird thing or google in the first place you know back then it was a little different it was it was it was a different type of battle um and so it was it was interesting and and getting out of my own way that was really eventually you learn you, you, you stay where you are and you're like, oh, this is fun. This is success, right? Or you realize you don't know what you don't know. Um, and that's how you level up. That's how people mostly yeah. actually hit that next level. And for me, it was it was a different age back then. Like, I don't remember when the, when the OGs, the real OGs back then, like Ty and all those started their little Lambo advertisements, but I remember ignoring them. 
<laughs> so I, 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 well, I was new back then too. And I just, when I would see that, I was like, what? Mm -hmm. He made that much money just from his laptop. I, I mean, just something basic like that. I just remember thinking that so vividly. That's funny though. So, I mean, it, it took you a little bit to kind of get it and hone it in, but then when you transitioned over to um, custom, custom creatives, the agency, right? Custom well, the, the, the first thing I did was just learn, right? I started investing in high ticket skills and I started investing, I, I call it by my friends, right? So you, mm. you're the amalgamation of like the five people you hang around with the most. And so if you want better people, sometimes you got to buy better friends. And that's honestly what we do to this day. We'll invest in like hundred thousand dollar masterminds just to have better networks of people to be around all the time. As much as the value of the course and, and the mentorship is, it's really just that network and buying into that network of people. And that, that started back then, like two or three years into it, I started, I was like, I gave my head a shake, right? I was this cocky, stupid kid who came out of university and did kind of well with some car flipping and thought that that was awesome. And eventually I had to just take my head and be like, no, man, you're, you're, you need to be the dumbest guy in the room, not thinking you're the smartest one in the room. And that allowed yeah. me to sharpen some skills, buy some better friends. And that shit took me much, much, much higher. Right. So it was the leaps and bounds that happened. And it really, I always say that sentence over and over again, like you don't know what you don't know. And it only by yeah. accepting yeah. that are you able to grow. But then you get to the point where it just clicks. Like when you mm -hmm. talk to someone, I think you get a point where this guy, this guy knows, this person knows what they're talking yeah. about. And you don't necessarily know what it is, but you just get that vibe. Like they hang around big people. They got a network. They got the right mindset. They've been around. They know what it's like to grind. They know what it's like to manage and strategize and have a different mindset. And when you hit that level, I think it's really obvious. But the cool thing is only people at that level can identify that too. Uh -huh. So it's both identical, identical in both ways, but that is, that's really a good idea. Most of the opportunities like I've had as well have come from, it's the, I think it's the hardest thing. Like when you, when you have to step away from certain friends, cause you know, they're not good for you. It's difficult, uh -huh. but it's like worth it at the end. And it's sort of similar with business. Like, don't just, don't just network with the wrong people, try to get networking with the right people and you'll find a lot of opportunities happening. So, so after that building phase um, and coming over to, um, custom creatives, did you kind of just see like an astronomical growth? And at that point, what did your team look like? Did you kind of have, was it just you and maybe a couple other people? And then as you kind of hit that next phase, your team so just grew. When we, we merged me and Rahul probably around the same level. Um, and then after that, we, we grew exponentially in custom creatives for a couple of reasons. We bought into a bunch of networks um, where we were able to accumulate a bunch of high ticket agency clients on the side who were also starting their coaching programs. We were able to leverage um, stuff. So I've got, I've got a history of testimonials from people like, you know, Cat Howell, Matt Ryder, John Whiting, all these people that we run ads for and specifically. So that's helped us get into more and more and more networks into that kind of stuff. Um, and then that is, you know, at that point, the team has always been mostly, slim so we run at about 70 percent margins uh, i think for the entirety of both the the agency and the coaching side run at about that so it's been it's something that we we really strive to do is keep the team focused um, and keep everything standardized so one thing that we teach in the in the gst program is not, not collapsing in under your own weight so mm. some people will grow too fast they'll make decisions in in different capacities without really knowing and usually it's it's the fallacy of thinking that you need more, right? So I want more time. So I need more employees or I need to hit 30,000 a month. So I need more clients and therefore right, to service right. those clients, I need more employees. And they make decisions out of assumptions and out of a desire for more without really truly creating a solvable problem and a trackable process to go. So I always, I always refer to the two concepts. One is the guy who wants to lose weight. Most people that wake up one day and they're like, oh man, I got, I got that extra tire. It's summer's coming. I got to do something about this shit, right? All they really do is they're like, I got to lose more weight. So they eat a little better and they work Think out. Like beer. Every day. And that's it, right? And they do that for like two or three weeks and then they get sick or something else in their life happens that's bad. And what ends up happening is they never work out again. They never, they never get back into it. And it's because they weren't really making any progress that they know of. Um, and they don't know why they were doing it and they don't know which thing was being effective. They're not tracking it. Right? The other person who tracks their calories and tracks their, like how many times they've worked out and what they're actually eating and what kind of progress they're making towards their gains or towards their weight loss. If you get sick for a few days, you can get back on track because you see the fucking thing right there. You know what you're doing. So, yeah. so 
And business is the same way. And we find a lot of times that people collapse in or they do the same thing. It's like they get into a, a program like ours and they're just told, you know, like you would with working out. It's like, oh, well, go, you know, go to the gym, eat better, do this shit. Okay. But they're not really tracking what each, what any of that shit's doing. And so they fail. And so when they stop and it doesn't get immediate results, they fail because there's no accountability or, or support. And so we try and really avoid that by, by providing those elements. Well, see, that's a good point because explaining this type of marketing or, or really in general, well, sales, is, I think a bit more tangible because your tool is your voice. So you kind of in language and stuff, so you can kind of tangibly notice what you're practicing, but with marketing it, I think it's just more difficult to sort of, it's easier to explain things more vaguely. Like, well, yeah, Google ads, you just put money in it and then it runs an ad and to go deeper, not only takes more thought, but it takes like a specific sort of strategy that you kind of have to put in. And so I think more often times than not, you do get generalized things like, well, just go do cold calling, no mechanics behind it, just do essentially. Yeah. So you even go, you guys even go more in depth to really just be like, no, here's specifically what you have to do. Here's how you need to say things. You're going to set things up. Here's how that looks like this. And yeah. I mean, our, our program is called get shit done for a reason. And it really is like, I, I, if you look at my social media pages at all, right, it's, it's a lot of talk about how people don't need more shiny objects or strategies or to go do like going and doing TikTok ads, isn't going to save your failing agency that you've never been able to do any other thing for. Right. It's you chasing a new strategy that you heard is good. And therefore you want to go do it, but you're probably not going to do any better at it than anything else because you don't know how to use it. What you need is mentorship, people like, you know, like us with over 25 years of experience who have done different shit and can provide insight to things when they break. And that's a key part right there. Um, and that's what we do. So we give them all the tools that work, but we have seven calls a week that we show up to. We have an accountability coach, a private one-on-one -on -one accountability coach that they go to. We have question threads. We have all these different areas where they can actually get the insight and the accountability to actually use the damn tools to, to make the, the business right. that they want. It's also right. And it's multifaceted. Like you need that constant building and support because you not only helping them learn how to like run a, run a simple system, but like the, like how to actually understand it and use it and mm -hmm. understand the point of it. So how yeah. many clients are you servicing? So the, the GSD program currently has about 150 people, 150 students um, in the, the client group. Um, and on the agency side, last time I checked, I think we had 50 plus clients or so on that side as well. So we have both of those businesses still run. And that, that's a key part to me is that we're not, we're not teaching people in the program about shit that used to work like 10 years ago and probably doesn't work now. We still run that size of an agency. And so we're constantly adapting and testing new shit. And then as soon as it works there, we cycle it through um, to all of our members and our students. So it helps them keep updated strategies and, and all that stuff. So what I'm noticing is like, you guys are really, it seems like you guys are really specific. You don't seem like confused. <laughs> Do you get that sometimes? Sometimes I talk to people and I'm thinking like, you're, you're making things really complicated and I'm shocked it's working for you. Um, but you guys seem really refined and really like, it's, it was also the experience you have and stuff. So I, I can see when probably people come in, they probably just get instant clarity and they're like, why haven't I done this before? And I, I like to live by the Einstein principle, right? If you can't explain it simply, you don't actually know it well enough. Right. And I totally agree with that. I totally agree with that. And if it's too complicated, it's probably not going to work. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, especially for sales, try and make an overly complicated, complex system. That sounds amazing to you. And I'm a builder. So like, I, that, that I will do that. And then you say, tell the salespeople your amazing idea and how awesome it is, but it has four different levers that they have to pull and complexity behind it. They'll never sell a single unit of that because they can't, they yeah. will never articulate that in a way that makes any sense to a prospect. And so that's, I mean, to me, that's the biggest place you need clarity is there. So what is your, what is your pricing model look for both sides? Uh, you mentioned this earlier, like your coaching, it's like a year long program. Do you just how does that pricing look? And then for your agency, is that sort of a little more uh, our, our, our agency side is about right now. I mean, our, our prices go up and down, you know, so future people who see this, if you stick this to me, I'm sorry, inflation, you know, but right now the agency prices are anywhere from five to 10 K a month for management fees. Um, and then the other side of that, the coaching is $2,000 a month is usually what it ends up being. And you're committed for six months to 12 months of the year. So you have, you have 
range in your price now well for for the coaching that's more of that's a, that's a one price right correct so we do we do have like lower level stuff that's in play but they sure. depending so we do have price points that we have like an incubator process that's like for any of you sports fans out there it's like if you watch hockey it's like a farm league or oh. like triple a for well, right. So same kind of thing. So people who aren't quite ready to join the, the other thing that we just we've trimmed it all down to only that first couple of steps you need. And it's a much lower price point per month just until you get to where you can you can level up. So we do have the farm leagues there so that you can get to the pros. But you like you really want to be in that 2K month thing. Like that's, that's where the gold point. is. That's the point. And the, and the point of the incubator is literally to incubate you just to get to the pros. I mean, if you're in you're in the AHL or in your, you're in AAA, you don't want to stay there. Your purpose isn't to no. not go pro. I mean, that's not what you've lived your whole life for. Right. No. So, no. I mean, you got you to gotta level up. You want the uniform. You want the you want the music. We walk out. You want the fireworks like you want the crowd. You no. want all that stuff. Ooh, so, like in your agency, since you have a kind of a more wide range of services, is it? Is it specifically designed that way for like a value ladder to get people in at a lower level and bring them up? Or is it, is it more of just like, no, we just have solutions or differently priced and we just offer the right solution for the right difference. So, so like the lower price point is just doing the shit for you. And the higher price point is bringing in team that you need. So we find specifically when we do ads for um, uh, agencies and that kind of stuff, if you don't, or coaches, if you don't have, a setter team in place it becomes a lot more difficult so we'll find that when we've run the agency and we've run the agency for a long long time that when we do the onboarding calls and we're very selective with our clients now so we don't really just take anybody we, we go through a whole vetting process with them where we need to see if they have the right team in place if they don't right because a lot of people will will just to backtrack a lot of people view agencies as like the thing that's supposed to save their failing piece of shit business yes Yes. That's not, that's not what it is. Like it's, it's an, it's an amplifier. That's it. Unfortunately, it will also amplify your shit. Like if you, I, I, like I post every month, I think at least once a month, I say the same thing. No amount of traffic is going to fix your shitty offer. And if I wanted to extrapolate no, on no. that, no amount of traffic is going to fix your shitty offer or your shitty team. And that's if, so the, the higher price points is we'll come in, we'll consult, we'll put you through the program. Basically you're going to get your offer in place and you're going to get some content down and you're going to prove it out, then we actually will go out and hire setters for them and we'll train them for them. And then we'll even manage them for them. And then we'll launch the ads when they're actually ready for them to work. Because all of our experiences taught us that like I can burn, I can light your money on fire. And maybe one time out of one time out of five, if it's not proven, it might work because we're good at what we do. And you might be really profitable, but the other times, cause you don't have anything in place, even if it works, you're going to burn out. So you, you, you really become, you really become like an addition, not so much an extension. Like you really get in there and like, because the, this, the shit's got to get done. <laughs> I mean, because you have to really, you have to, if you don't, if you don't, they make assumptions and that, that can be whatever. I mean, agencies make promises, but they don't yeah. understand what they're doing and people don't really know what they need to do. And they're like, I'm really good at ads. I can get you leads. That's great, man. Cheap leads are great, but does anybody know how to, how to work them or how to close them? Or are you just going to stare at one number on a screen and assume that you're doing a good job until they fire you? And then you're like, well, clients or, you know, because that's all that ends up happening. Totally. That, that, that well, it, it, it's sort of like they only do part of the solution. Uh-huh. And then the rest is like, could just be, you know, for the other 50% could be just these people don't even know like how to manage this. So you're going up to them saying, Hey, your 5,000 per month being invested is working. Look at this four four bajillion leads. And you're like, cool. Well, there's no clients. And then, then there's that dance of like, hey, take it even a step back. I've seen people like, cause we have to do recordings of even project manager calls. Oh, I can't I've seen this. calls where like, literally it's like, Look at all these amazing leads that we've got. We've been, we're running this thing for like three weeks. There's hundreds of leads in here. How are you guys doing? And the client looks at them like, "How are we? What do you mean? Well, who, we, you know, how how have you been calling the leads? Call calling the leads. There's nobody calling the leads. What do you mean? Get us clients. Bring us clients. Leads. Yes. Clients. Disconnect. Broken. Nothing. No setup. Nothing correctly in place to do anything with the marketing you're doing. So the marketer thinks they're doing amazing work patting themselves on the back the whole time. Great work. Good job. And the client's sitting there like, well, where's the money? Um, money out, no money in. That's all they're saying. Exactly. And there's exactly. no 
communication and there's no understanding. And then, and then people wonder why there's such high churn rates for a lot of younger agencies. And that, I mean, that explains it right there. Right. Well, there's like two parts to that. There's like, the first part is um, they expect, well, first of all, typically if expectations aren't set correctly and things aren't set up right, that's, you're right. The expectation is like, there's no clients. And you're like, no, the opportunity for clients is what I've made for you. Like, no, no, no. We want, you're supposed to like walk one in. And with mm-hmm. his card out, and that's it. There's no, because that's what the promise was, right? And so that, right. yeah, especially, I mean, especially young agencies that hire salespeople and they don't know what salespeople are. Because if you don't, if you just let a salesperson go and you just make assumptions on what they're doing, you're going to screw yourself because a salesperson loves salespeople. But a salesperson will say what they need to say to get the deal in the door. And they're prom- probably promising shit or, or explaining shit in a way that makes the client overestimate what's what's going to happen right away and so there has to be an expectation so we we, we push a lot on ours in our training we call it the, the honeymoon phase which is between where the salesperson made all the promises and when the leads actually start coming in because there's all this hopium going on right where everybody's oh this is great oh this is going to happen and then the first couple of leads come in and the very first person they talk to doesn't close and they're like mm, maybe this isn't <laughs> what I thought it would be. And so that you have yeah, to leverage yeah. that place to, to set expectations. And if they do that properly, you'll keep your clients. And if you don't, you're just asking for like, oh, yeah. And the second part to that also would probably extend out to you're not picking the right people because you're picking people who are desperate. So they're gambling their 5,000 that they have, hoping they're going to hit Jack like the lotto in a month, mm-hmm. you know, and then after a month, like I, I can't afford the next month. And you're like, what? I gave you 4,000 leads. It's the same, it's the same sort of thing. And so you really need like the whole marketing thing I think works best is when you find someone who they're already are successful, but they hit sort of a baseline of, of results and they want to, they want to let's go up from where we're at. Okay. Well, here's what it looks like. And then you actually talk budget and you're like, what's the budget you can sustain Mm -hmm. that you're just investing in. I mean, that, that, you say that for any industry too. Like our, our favorite people are the agencies between like two and five K because we've taken like f- between 50 and a hundred of those to at least 20, 30 K months now from two to five K. Cause it's That's just great. not, it's not that hard to do when you know what you're doing. Refine, like refine the offer a little bit, get them some organic marketing, get them set up with paid in stages that make sense and have them actually show the hell up to the calls every time. And you can do it. It's, it's, it's just about having somebody hold your hand who's done it for 20 years and actually show you how the fuck to do it. And that's right. It. So every, and that every, could, that could be a daunting leap for people. Cause it's just intimidating and you don't want to look, you know, like a failure, it, but when you do it, it's, you unlock just this wealth of knowledge that, you know, is just going to help you. I mean, that mm-hmm. took, that took me a while to kind of rip that bandaid off, you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, me, me, go ahead. We already talked about that at the beginning. Yeah, exactly. So like, <laughs> What's like the number one thing that moves your revenue the most or your money needle? For, the most? For, well, for both, I guess. Yeah. I mean, for, for both, we do, we have both. So the same thing as what we teach, we have both organic marketing and paid. So if you look at my profile and Rahul's profile, we have, our profiles are geared towards the coaching program. We do content every single day. We do Instagram shout outs and Instagram content. We do TikTok videos. I, I, we have a group of 6,000 people. Um, and growing, right? And we do pay traffic. We spend quite a bit of money each month um, on both Facebook and YouTube ads, all to generate to our team. And we have a team of setters, five setters and two closers as of this talk right now. So all of that is working as a system, right? As a cyclical system to generate conversations and to generate ongoing sales. Um, and for the other one, we, we do have a group, another group of about 6,000 plus people for the agency side that are specific to uh, the real estate department. So we do a lot of real estate marketing yeah. for those types of people. Um, and the same thing, we have some salespeople and some setters and some content cycles over there as well. So you just have a well-oiled, proven machine that's just in place, just rinse and repeating, it starting is, conversations. I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend anybody lean on one thing. That's why like, you know, because if you lean on just a Facebook group, forever and then facebook does what they did with facebook pages and all of a sudden all that reach goes away and that was all you were leaning on then it's gone forever right and so you need to have the capability of being a marketer not the capability of knowing how to pull one lever all day long right you need to have a system that that if one of the the things fail right if one of the pistons fail the other five picks it back up okay you can answer this question for both if you want um or whichever makes sense that's fine What's like the number one automation you have in your business that you just can't function without? 
Ugh, automation. So we, we use high level um, as an automation tool. That's where most of it comes through. I've also set up a um, intricate, we'll call it, data studio thing that tells me exactly what's going on at all times. So actual cost per calls, triage calls booked from setters, triage calls booked from ads, sales calls booked from all of them, overall cost per group member, all of the group members were coming in per day. And all of this is charted on this big long thing. So technically that's all set up through uh, a couple of spreadsheets and then automated factors coming in through high level. That allows me as a marketer and as a, a CEO to actually keep my finger on the pulse of exactly what's going on at all times and know what levers to pull. Spend more money here, mm. hire more setters here, fire this guy because he's not keeping pulling his weight, replace this guy, right? And it's all about, to me, it's all about having as much and as accurate data as you can because when you go to pull one of those levers, if you're doing it blindly, you don't know what's actually going to happen. You're making an assumption. It could go well, it could not go well. But you're just, you know, you're, 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 you're implying like learned helplessness at that point. You're just doing shit to do shit. You don't actually know why. And without that, you're just flying blind. You can't run a company that way, especially not at scale. So we're, no. we're at the point now where if I did that, you know, that's going to cost a lot of money. And so we have to avoid those, those kind of issues. Especially when you're in an industry and it's a high cost to not to get clients. <laughs> you don't want to, yeah, exactly. you don't want to mess with that. No. Mm -hmm. And every like every dollar saved or every well dollar amount, I guess that's it. Every dollar saved is is worth it. And when you say it that way, actually, it does sink in a little heavier, I think, than mostly explained. Because sometimes people usually just say, oh, just track what you do. So you make good decisions. The way hmm. you explained it was like, if you don't know what you're doing, you're guessing. And that one guess could butterfly effect or just roll like a snowball effect and just you're you could sink yeah 100 if you don't know like and that the other thing is like a lot of people do track shit just to track shit They're like oh this is where my real cost per lead is coming from like, yeah who knows what does that tell you man like as a business owner you, you should be a chess player right it's not about the initial effect of your actions it's about the secondary and tertiary effects of every single thing you do including like how are you motivating your employees to behave because if you're only looking one step step ahead say you want more calls so you actually give bonuses to your setter team and your sales team to just book more calls right and that sounds great on the surface level but what almost always ends up happening is you end up with them faking it and you end up with a whole bunch of no-shows and you end up with unqualified garbage yeah. because you didn't think about the secondary and tertiary effects of that preliminary thing that you're motivating them to do and so you have to and in order to really know that you have to have the data in my opinion you have to have as much of that as you can well i mean it it just seems the, really the only way that you can make well-informed decisions, like intentionally. And those decisions, you ex sort of expect the results from them. And I feel <laughs> like that's the only way you can really do that. Go, the decision we made should help us get X percent more sales, give or take the amount of percentage. You probably will hit that if you know exactly what you need to do. Yeah. So how does your sales process look? Is it, is it long? Is it short? Is it simple? Like you well, start a conversation. I mean how does that kind of... Our sales through. process in general is we build our audience through going out and being interviewed in other people's groups, um, as well as organic friend edition and then ads that we spend a lot of money on ads that all flow to the group. So we're constantly filling up all the buckets. So if I generate an email, I want to send them an email that also says join my group. If I'm sending them through a chatbot, I want to also send them to a page where they get a free thing where they're going to give us their email, right? Like all those buckets have to be filled and everything flows back right now to our middle of funnel nurturing thing, which is the group and our email list and all that stuff. Hmm. Then we have a team of setters that go out and talk to those people. And then that conversation develops by us making sure everything that we do is coming from a place of help. So if a setter, if they're like, you know, you know, people, I don't want to talk to you. I don't want you selling me shit. I don't want to talk to you. Don't fucking talk to me. Okay. Well, all of our setters are trained to be like, that's fine. And I appreciate you anyway. Here's some amazing free shit that you can have. And I'm just going to leave this here and I'm going to leave you alone. And if you yeah. decide that that's any good and you want to hear back from us at any point, go ahead. If not, enjoy your life. And so we come from a place of helping them all, all the time. And that ends up getting people in. So why I give that big, long spiel is because we have that process that leads to sales all the time. Some people that have been in our group for two years, watching our shit for two years, some of them didn't have money enough to invest. And then they watched some of our free trainings that we have in our group, made some money and invested. And like a year later, a couple of our best clients 
did that. They invested like $97 and they only had 500 in the bank. Um, and they made a couple clients from the, the free training. And then now I think they've been in the program for a year and each of them are at like $25,000, $30,000 a month now. So they went from broke to doing that through that process. The other side of it is we do have ads that are what we call DBOs, which is just direct booking offers. Um, and those are just like those, they get sales right away. So we actually had one today that I onboarded that booked from an ad like last week. And you kind of have to have both. Now, when you're starting out, you can't have both, right? So the organic and the nurturing and the master classes and the challenges are going to help you kind of do that. But eventually you get to the point where you want to have all of those, those pipelines kind of flowing. Right. So your follow-up process is still kind of the same way you nurture to get those possibly booked calls anyways. Like you have the groups and you have your buckets full. They're not ready now, fine, but you're still adding value. So like, no matter what, they just have this continuous stream of growth and value. Cause it seems like they could even, they even get growth and results from the free stuff you give. So oh, it's kind of like, it doesn't really matter if you buy now. And I can see why you have that mindset. And I think the people who buy from you are more attracted when they are ready, they do. Yeah, because you have I mean, we, we give them enough to take you. those those first few steps in the free shit. We don't. What the problem is with the free shit, you're not going to get the insights. That's where it breaks down. So, like, if the system that we give you in our free stuff doesn't work right away, then then you have to you have to pay for the help because that's just you need our time really to do yeah. it. And that's really what the program is about. It's, it's yeah, the shit's good and all of our stuff works and we update it all the time. But it's the people and that show up and keep you accountable and getting shit done. Right, that's what really makes it difference. Dude, that, that tagline you have in the shirt like fits into every sentence. It works perfectly. <laughs> well, that's why I keep sneaking it in. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, it, like, it doesn't sound like you're branding it. You know, it's not like a branding no. thing. It's like, you know, I love Pepsi, TM, you know? <laughs> like, it works out exactly. well. So how much, mm-hmm. how much revenue has your businesses generated in the past 12 months? Yeah, so we are at least over, over a couple of million. I don't know the exact numbers off the top of my head, but last time collectively, checked, yeah, collect collectively, both, both businesses are seven figures. So if, if you had a revenue goal for, I mean the, the GSD one specifically, I just did a post on my profile were 15 straight months over a hundred K a month. So that one alone covers that and then the other side is also up, up close to that so that would be a more specific answer so from today for the next 12 months ahead of you what's kind of a realistic revenue goal you guys have in mind so we're I'll looking be- yeah i mean I'm, I'm looking to get up to i want to get up to half a mil a month within the next couple of years that's that's next 12 months i'd like to be hitting that goal and then what would be like the one thing you feel like you'd have to change to hit that goal nothing momentum that's cool that's cool so you really have you have it set to do that we just need more momentum yeah. maintain and build momentum that's i mean but that's that could be said of every of every entrepreneur i, I tell people look no matter what you do you're gonna have ups you're gonna have downs but it's it's about like when you look in sometimes it looks like this as long as when you zoom out it looks like that then you're you're good and for people in audio land who don't see me squiggle in lines with my hands, one was up and down really fast. And the other one was more of a upward trend. I mean, that's inevitable. You know, of course it's going to go up and down, but, but I just feel like if you put the time and effort into the boring stuff, like how do we, how do we retain our clients longer? How do we squeeze more budget out of them? I mean, that can sound bad, but you know what I'm saying? You know, how do we, how do we increase our lifetime value? I mean, all those little things, and you said it in the beginning, actually, and I, I really like what you said was a lot of people think in order to scale, you need more clients in mm-hmm. order to service more clients to scale. Um, you need more staff and then that I need a bigger office space. And, and it's all this kind of just surface level things when they go, well, hold on, you already have 50 clients, maybe save the money and see how, how can we enhance what they're spending with you? How can we do this? Are there new programs we can add or that? And there's a lot of optimization and it's not necessarily fun, but. Um, you can streamline it. We, we've streamlined streamline ours, like the coaching part of the business, probably maybe eight people. And like I said, like currently a hundred and somewhere between a hundred and 150 ongoing people and their team in there. So, I mean, it, it's, it's scalable at less people than you think. 
You just need to build it correctly. So we have layers and layers and layers of support that make people feel like they're getting white glove treatment, even if we don't have to have constant touch points because they have so many communication and so much going on and all the places they need to go to help that any individual on our team should not feel overwhelmed ever at this particular level, right? And then we should be fine to scale up for a little bit. So as long as you preemptively, again, chess player, right? Design your stuff to, to, to work at scale, which is where I, at the beginning of this, I said, you know, we tell people build and act as if, right? That's part of it. Act as if you're already the company you plan to be. Build those systems in place so that you grow into them, not so that you collapse the old ones that you already have. Right, right. I have one last question for you. And the people who listen to this are, it's sort of a spectrum, actually. It's sort of like we have people who are just considering wanting to start their own business. And maybe they've, you know, seen our company Dash Clicks or yours or similar companies. And they're thinking, maybe I want to get in a marketing agency or consulting or something. Mm -hmm. There's people who just started, like the people you service, who go from 3K to, you know, 5K to 25K. And then we have some big dogs and stuff. But majority is kind of that starter end. What's like the number one advice you could give someone that's like the, the best advice you can give for someone to save um, the most time, you know, without wasting years of wasted time, essentially. Buy somebody else's leadership. The, the best way to skip time is to purchase somebody else's mistakes. That's, I mean, that's, that's the reality of it because you're going to spend all the time you want to do it yourself. And it's probably going to cost you just as much at the end of it anyway. So why not just buy the fast pass? I mean, we live, you could not imagine how many people out there are trying to just give you their knowledge. Like you think 10 years ago, like I, what did I bring up? Like Ty? That was yeah. it. <laughs> I can't remember. I ended up now that we're here, like there's just so many. Every time I turn the corner, there's some, I'm not saying you got to use us. You got to use, you know, use the get shit done program. I love you guys. Come to us. Right. Dash clicks. Great. For sure. Right. For sure. But just find somebody, man. Go on YouTube. If you don't, if you don't have it yet, find some free shit. Like I said, our free shit has helped people make money. Go get some free shit, make some money, and then use that money to buy the rest of the fast pass. Think of it right now. Like all, all you guys out there that listen to this podcast in the future. Look, I'm gonna look at the camera now because I've been staring at myself for some reason on a screen. You're at <laughs> Disneyland right now. All right. I was thinking about you just, that they built Disneyland. Okay. And now you, you're standing there and you're looking, you want to go on Space Mountain, and you can see how big the line is. Now you can go and you can be one of those people who stands in that line. That line is going to take three years plus. I know, scary. Mm. Beside that line, there's an easy little vending machine. It's got the words fast pass written on it. And there's like 50 buttons all over it for you to use. You can go over there and you can spend a little bit of your money. Hell, I mean, some people have given us their last dollars. I only let them do that when I know they're going to get shit done shameless plug and you can go over there and hit that button and take that out and go right through and walk right past every person that's standing in that line all you have to do right now is make that decision you're going to go on space mountain today or you're going to go on space mountain in three years which one of those games do you want to play which type of player do you want to be that's it that metaphor was dope plus the also another comparisons like people spend way more going to college jumping out and being like WTF. <laughs> like, <laughs> you think, you think that thing helped me do any of this? No, I put these two things together just because they happen to be both cool looking things in the background. They don't actually both help me as much. It's I mean, uh, I, I'm trying to build credibility. So I put some books yes, up there. <laughs> so I, got, I got the books over there. The yeah, look at, my, the... <laughs> look at my knowledge. Look at that. Good, yeah, look, look at us. <laughs> and I got, I got a cricket and an iron. I got a bunch of random stuff in here. It's perfect. It's good, dude. That was an amazing metaphor, and I think that that one's really going to stick because it, it, I think the really well, there's there's that like there's a lot of clarity you can find, but also it's it's also like it you can't make the decision making easier. Mm -hmm. It's still going to be difficult. Even if you have the best thing in front of you, it's still going to be difficult to go, yeah, let's do it. And let's change my life. Because I mean, you literally have to change your life to start it and you have, to, and it will change your life. But it, if you get past that and take that fast lane, I mean, 
you know, you'll look back and if you really put the effort in and had the right people like you guys or something, you can't, how could you regret that? I mean, just to hover on one thing you said right there, the problem with a lot of people is they want their situation to change, but they don't want to change anything about their situation. And so, yeah, because it's, it's difficult to do that. <laughs> it is. And it's a hard realization to come to that. And the same thing I said earlier, like, you don't know what you don't know. Easy for me to sit here and say that easy for you to receive it and think, yeah, I don't know what I don't know. That's, that's, that's an obvious thing. Yeah. But for people to have that realization that they don't, when they think that they know something, they're going to stick to that because it's an ego play and it's just human nature to just be like, I know this, I'm good at Facebook ads. When you can just admit to yourself that there's levels to everything and that no matter how good you think you are right now, there's more to learn and open yourself up to that, to even learning from people who might not be doing as well as you are, but understanding they probably have better skills at certain things than you, the whole world opens up. And that's when you can buy the fast pass. First, you got to see it. Yeah. Right now, a lot of people are just living with blinders on. They can't even see the little vending machine thing. They're stuck. They're stuck in the line. The line is so far back, they didn't even know there was the vending machine down there. Right? They got yeah. the blinders yeah. on, and they got to figure that out. But then you got to then you got to realize that just because you're in the fast lane doesn't mean you'll get to the end, and unless <laughs> you make another hard decision to yes. go, I'm going to shut up, and I'm going to do what this guy's telling me to do, and I'm not going to question it. Cause it's, it might seem really, you might be really eager and mm -hmm. have an urge to like question everything, <laughs> you know, but mm -hmm. just hunker down, get it going, listen to people that know what they're doing and you could, you could get it too. Um, yeah. One last thing I want to ask before, before we end this is, do you feel like anyone could be successful? It's more of just like a worth ethic thing, or do you think you do kind of have to have a little bit of something, you know, whatever that is. Do I think any, I'm going to answer that as a two part thing. Do I think any person could be successful? No. And what do you I'd love? To, that, I'd love to get the woo woo coach answer here for you, but no, I don't. I don't think that at all. Um, but the other side of that is I also don't think that like you have to have something special in you to do it. It's, it's more or less a willingness to learn and an ability to commit. Work ethic is one thing. Hustle, hustle is one thing, but you could work for, I mean, it's like, it's like you're a realtor, you hear a realtor. I've been a realtor for 20 years. Well, you, you can be an idiot for 20 years. You, you could just be doing the wrong thing for it's a It's funny. Long you time. mentioned realtors though. It's a little more funny. That's just because I've worked with them a lot in the agency side and you hear that a lot where they're like, oh, I've been doing this for 20 years. Well, you've been doing this wrong for 20 years. I don't know what else to tell you. <laughs> you're still here on the ladder. There's this much more to go then the reason that that's true is because you is because exactly what you just said you you have not yet admitted to yourself that you don't know what you don't know you've been doing it for a long time and therefore you've decided that's the way to do it but you're wrong i got one last thing to say about that and then and then we'll end it there the uh it is so funny when you or you are on a sales call when i used to do these i still do a couple things on the side but um and you go so you know what do you think about that and, I, and he goes listen daniel I've been a realtor for 35 years and you know, I've done this, I've sold a $4.5 million home. And then I'm thinking in my head, like, Jim, cool. Did you sell one home? You're on a phone call with me to help you get more deals. And do you realize when you say that you've been doing this for 40 years and you're on a phone call with me trying to get marketing to help you makes it sound worse when you say that? It's or, like, or that you picked out one decent sale and then told you that you've been doing it for 35 years. So all that implies is you've yeah. done that once in 35 years. And also <laughs> like, I'm, I'm from, I'm, I live in Vancouver. It's like, well, that's just the, that's every house on the block. Like, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> yeah, know. It's like, it's like, Hey, da Daniel, did you know that mm -hmm. I got rated five stars on Yelp? Did you, did you know that I have a little sticker in my window? Did you not know that? Yeah, Jim. Thanks. Appreciate it. Very good. Very good, sir. Yeah. Yep. Man, Cody Getchell of Custom Creatives out of Vancouver, but you're off, you have an office in Los Angeles too. Dude, thank you so much. How can people find you? Two ways. One, find me on, on uh, Facebook, Cody Getchell. I'm the guy with the, the shit on my banner that says build an awesome agency or coaching program. Two, go to joingsd.com forward slash group. And join that amazing community. It's got about 6,000 agencies, coaches in there doing awesome shit. Dude, that was simple. 
some people drop a lot of links and I'm like, oh crap, I gotta add all that. People aren't gonna follow a bunch of links. Just join gsd.com forward slash group. I'm gonna do it like a radio play. Join gsd.com forward slash group. Say the same thing three times on the radio. They remember it, they click it. That's true. Sweet dude, dude, I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Cool, man. Appreciate you as well. Happy to be here.